okay, the previous videos, you'll see me arguing with Ozzy backwards and forwards about how big this space in the hallway at the top of the stairs needed to be. Now, there's no actually written rule when it comes to regs, but as long as it's no smaller than the maximum width of the inside of the stairs, from the top of the stairs to the finished skirting boards, you should be okay. But, but the problem is, is we're trying to maximize the space of this ensuite. So, so moving this over in the hallway was quite important. The happy medium is bang on the line that you needed to be for that side, as well as getting an ensuite, which is still a pretty good size. And I think, damn, if you come and have a look, I think that's gonna be a pretty good size ensuite. So you'll also remember our good friends at Norwich City Council housing department like to come and enforce on bedroom sizes even though that we've beat them every single time they still probably will continue to come because guess what it's not their money that they're spending it's yours and mine in taxpayers money so what we have to do is we have to be ready for them now a door opening into a room reduces the size of a room of about 0.25 square meters but if you have two doors occupying the same space they can only deduct it once so it's important to get the ensuite door and the door into the bedroom as close as possible and ideally occupying the same space. This door will open outwards because even though normally in a family house that's a bit awkward, you can have doors clashing, it actually gives a lot more space for this ensuite. We will have the sink, the toilet and the shower just in that corner and down is standard. And as a result, our smallest bedroom becomes a pretty good size. Now the minimum is 6.51 square meters. This is going to be closer to 7.51, not included in our little hallway, which is just that little bit added benefit. So I'm really happy with this overall space. This is normally the smallest room in the house. We're going to have five really good sized bedrooms within this project. So last time I talked about how we normally build this ensuite in this front bedroom, which is always the problematic one in terms of drainage and hot and cold feeds. And normally we angle the, the wall to get the door facing the room or put it on this side. We've never put it here facing the entrance into the room. And every project, yeah, we've done this dozens of times, hundreds of different refurbs, but dozens in this certain layout. But what it does, is it gives you a wall space here. Now, when you're thinking about student accommodation, wall space is so key because they need desks, they need wardrobes, they need TVs on the wall, they need drawers, bedside cabinets, as much storage as possible. And where you have a flat wall, which is not gonna be obscured by a bed, is really, really crucial. So in these types of properties, there's two different layers, but this tends to be the more popular one. This side, this sort of left hand bedroom, which is always next to the existing bathroom, is always my favorite. It's a nice open space. You get a nice position for the TV to go on the wall. You still retain the storage, but you get the biggest bathroom. I don't know whether it's because it's really vague and love spending time in the bathroom, but having a big bathroom where I can really spread out is bloody crucial to me. And this space, which is the old bathroom, just comes off really well. And all we've done is knock through the existing wall with a new door frame, little bit of patchwork, little bit of patchwork here to here, board up the old doorway, and now it's almost ready for tidying. 